This week on The Splash, we visit an ice cream social. Then, we see how to keep our gardens looking great. And later, we enjoy a local car show. The Splash is a production of Civic Center TV. We're a news magazine that covers everything from local news to feature stories, all so that we can bring you the latest from the greater West Bloomfield area. And now, let's dive into The Splash. Welcome to The Splash. I'm your host, Sheena Monin, and as always, thank you for joining us. Getting together with friends and family is an important part of most of our lives. Recently, Sylvan Lake held an ice cream social where families could do just that. We sent reporter Shannon Line to find out more. While most people stay in on a rainy day, those who live in Sylvan Lake come together for a delicious treat and a long-standing tradition. A drizzle of rain couldn't keep Sylvan Lake from coming together as a community for the Garden Club's annual ice cream social, getting the opportunity to catch up with one another. Sylvan Lake is really unique in that there's so much connection between its residents and there's a great history with everything that goes on here. Yeah, we have approximately 1,400 residents here and it's just a time for everybody to gather in a common place. While there are many special treats available for citizens of Sylvan Lake, this ice cream social is very special for another reason. This is the 53rd year of doing this. It started in 1965. We encourage everyone to come, especially new residents, because then you get to meet your neighbors mm -hmm. at something like this. People come because they haven't seen their neighbors all winter, even though this is August and people are out in the summertime. but. We, it, it's a, such a friendly neighborhood that people walk, they walk their dogs, they are out on their boats, they're at the beach. It's just a great place to gather and be with your friends and neighbors. The annual ice cream social event in the end is a small tradition that keeps residents in touch with one another year after year. It's, it's not a money maker or anything. It's all the ladies in the garden club and other people bring cakes and their special their, their dessert specialty mm -hmm. and then we have ice cream and all for a dollar fifty. It's really amazing. So it's uh, it's just a fun gathering for people in the neighborhood to get together. We have new people coming in all the time, so it's reconnecting, making new acquaintances, just saying hello again. From ice cream and cake to a 53-year tradition, here at Sylvan Lake Community Center, I'm Shannon Line reporting for The Splash. To find out more, you can visit civiccentertv.com slash ice cream social 2018. Learning how to take care of our yards and gardens is not always an easy task. Reporter Tyler Keeft visited a local expert to discover how to keep our gardens looking good. Detroit Garden Works first opened its doors in 1996. Since then, it has become one of Sylvan Lake's most successful businesses, supporting local gardeners of all interests and skill levels. We want to provide an experience of the garden to all of our customers, no matter their level of interest. So we sell primarily objects for gardens, pots and benches, furniture, trellis work, tools and equipment so that a person who's a hands-on gardener who requires a really fine set of gardening tools can find that available for purchase here. And a person who just appreciates the beauty of a garden could find something to set in their garden as a sculpture or uh, an object around which to organize a garden. We have those things here. One of the only of its kind upon opening, Detroit Garden Works has grown into a nationally recognized garden store, right in our backyard. I think that keeping what we have to offer fresh is very important. We're constantly looking into new companies that make things, new trends in gardening. Um, we're trying to do the best we can to provide good service to clients and specialized service. You know, we have people here with names and faces and they recognize our customers and know their families, know their kids, know their yards. Although massively successful and nationally renowned, Detroit Garden Works prides itself on building personal relationships with its customers. And those relationships have had a great impact on the prettiest little city in the state of Michigan and on the store itself, 
one that owner Deborah Silver recognizes every day. When I go through the neighborhood, I see more people gardening in pots. I see more garden plants in the ground. I see more awareness of how a garden can be satisfying to, to people and provide them some sense of serenity if they're, you know, if their life is busy and frantic. Reporting for The Splash, I'm Tyler Kieft. For more information, feel free to stop by our website at civiccentertv.com slash Detroit Garden Works. Still to come, we enjoy a local car show, and then we take a look at a new episode of Sidewalk Talk. Don't go away. You're watching The Splash on Civic Center TV. to the splash on Civic Center TV. Welcome back to the splash. I'm your host, Sheena Manan. Our community has several long-standing traditions that the entire family can enjoy. The annual pre-Dream Cruise car show at Geno's in Kego Harbor is a much anticipated favorite. I stopped by to find out more. 21 years of history came together for the annual Geno's pre-Dream Cruise car show for a fantastic day of fun for the entire family. This is something that's, uh, as you said, is growing because of the fact that um, it's now that it's gone so many years, people are, are, are learning about it. So basically, uh, word of mouth is getting out. And, um, you know, the, it, Dream Cruise is a big, big event in Detroit. And um, a pre-Dream Cruise thing is always uh, the buildup to the big event on, on Saturday. So for Kego Harbor, this is fantastic because it brings all these beautiful cars. I mean, as you can see, it's just gorgeous amount of cars here. And um, we couldn't ask for a better day. It takes a community to make such a large event a success. And in a community like Kego Harbor, volunteers are not hard to find. It's uh, very rewarding. I, I love seeing the community come out for this. It's just wonderful. There's a dance group that's going to perform tonight and uh, um, another, we have the doo-wop group, plus we have uh, some other singer that's going to be joining in in the festivities. So it's great to see. It's kind of taken a life of its own over the years. To keep the history of Detroit strong, the show offered some surprises for car owners. These are not uh, not an official car trophy. These are fun awards. So, but we do have some a group of judges that are from the local car clubs that go around and, and they actually go and talk to all the owners and find out what's in their car and what's you know what they have. And uh, this is just an example of best paint. And there's another one of Gino's favorite car. And so there are fun awards. They're not really official, but they're, they're fun. But people sign up for it and they enjoy it. There will always be a spot for classic cars. And, and eventually those electric cars are going to become classics too. I imagine, uh, well, for that matter, uh, my wife drives a 2012 Volt. And there's usually during this week, a, 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 they call it a silent cruise down Woodward with all the electric cars that go down. So, so um, but this passion doesn't go away with new technology or autonomous vehicles. Gino's pre-Dream Cruise car show is a positive reminder that no matter how advanced technology becomes, there will always be room for family, community, and classic cars. For more information on the 21st annual pre-Dream Cruise car show, you can visit civiccentertv.com slash Gino's Car Show 2018. Now it's time for another episode of Sidewalk Talk, where Samana Sheik spoke to Greater West Bloomfield residents to find out their thoughts on a new topic.
The advice that I would give my 18-year-old self is to stay confident. What about you? What's the advice you would give your past self? I would try to tell her to figure out a way to like get rich by then. <laughs> you know what I mean? But 18-year-old um, me, I would tell her not to dwell on the small things because somehow, thankfully, through the grace of God or whoever, things always seem to work out. Enjoy life the best you can for the most part of it. Simplistic. I'm a very simple person. I uh, can't go any further than that. Move to New York instead of Florida. You moved to Florida? Yeah, I lived there for three years. That's amazing. Oh, my gosh. And why would you pick New York? Well, I wanted to go to New York, but I don't know. My sisters wanted to go to Florida, so we went there instead. And I just kind of still feel like I want to live in New York, you know. Listen more. Okay. Listen more. Ask more questions. My 18-year-old self had red hair. And now looking back, that's definitely not something that I would ever do again. So my 18-year-old self would not have red hair. <laughs> Be as awesome as you are already. <laughs> So if you could go back in time and give your 18-year-old self advice, what would it be? Um, just always stay true to who you are. I like that because a lot of people do lose themselves. Yeah. Uh, go to U of M. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> I wish I could have done that now. <laughs> scholarship and didn't go. <laughs> Same. <laughs> I would say don't be afraid. Because I was, I was in my life. I was so caught up in fear, scared of, scared to do, do things that I wanted to do. Because what would people think? Will people think I'm good enough? Fear. I would say, don't be afraid. Just go, go with your dreams. Follow your dreams. That's what I would tell myself. Oh my! It would be not to be in such a hurry to do everything that everybody else did. To take my own self's advice and to take my own time and and look around before I made any best moves. Be more fearless. So confidence? Confidence and just trust that it's going to work out the way it's supposed to. And don't be so scared. I love that. It would be perfect for all the girls to follow. Absolutely, I agree. Because at the end of the day, I mean, what are you so worried about? Remember, if you ever see us on the streets of West Bloomfield, Sylvan Lake, Orchard Lake, or Kego Harbor, stop by and be a part of Sidewalk Talk. If you'd like to see some of our other fun and interesting questions on the show, you can do so anytime and anywhere by visiting our website at civiccentertv.com slash sidewalk talk. And now it's time for our Civic Center event update, where we provide you with all the latest that's happening around Greater West Bloomfield. And if you'd like to stay up to date on all of the following current events yourself, you can visit civiccentertv.com slash events. Let's get started. <laughs> It's time again for Henry's Market on Main, running now until November 14th at Henry Ford West Bloomfield Hospital. Anyone can participate in Henry's Market on Main, a great way to buy fresh, locally grown produce and other products. From 9 a.m. until 5 p.m. on Wednesdays, you can stop by to purchase fresh and healthy food, including baked goods, herbs, and more, as well as flowers and seedlings. Food samples will be available, as well as the hospital's specially invited chefs being on hand to demonstrate how to prepare healthy meals. This recurring event is free. For more information, contact Kelsey Bray at 248-325-0825. Coming up on August 25th from 2 to 4 p.m., West Bloomfield Parks is holding their Marvelous Monarch Session for Kids. Join the fun of a brief lesson on how to identify monarch butterflies. Learn about their life cycle with live caterpillar examples. Discover what they eat and how you can make a difference for them right in your own backyard. Be a part of the butterfly release and learn to drink like a butterfly and make a butterfly craft. Cost for this event is $7 for residents and $12 for non-residents. For more information to register, visit wbparks.org. On August 25th from 2 to 3 p.m., visit the West Bloomfield Township Public Library for a special afternoon learning about science, technology, engineering, art, and math. This free session is fun for the entire family as you can interact together to problem solve, explore concepts and ideas related to STEAM, and better understand each other. No registration is required for this event. 
On August 30th from 4 to 6 p.m., stop by the West Bloomfield Township Public Library for a fun afternoon culmination of the summer reading program. You won't want to miss this end of summer fun. Get your dancing feet ready to move and groove with the DJ's music. Get an airbrush tattoo and enjoy meeting some larger animals, including a llama. This event is free and no registration is required. For more information, be sure to visit wblib.org. On August 30th, bring your kids for Kids Commotion Concert featuring Paul Carey Group and Rick Paul. Starting at 6 p.m. and going until 8 p.m., this concert is sure to bring some fun and excitement into your child's life. There will be free crafts, bounce house, and food for purchase. Come early to enjoy the activities before the concert begins. For more information, visit wbparks.org. The Chaldean Cultural Center Museum is open to the public on Fridays from 11 a.m. until 3 p.m. Come learn about this fascinating culture, complete with hands-on activities, multimedia presentations, and a showcasing of special artifacts from time periods gone by. Tours are available by appointment and cost $5 for a self-guided tour and $10 for a guided tour. To schedule your tour or find out more details, be sure to visit ChaldeanCulturalCenter.org. And that's all for now. However, if you're looking to find even more events going on in your neighborhood, then be sure to follow us at civiccentertv.com slash events and look up our events calendar. Or watch us here for more information on everything going on in the greater West Bloomfield area. As we head into the break, stay tuned because afterwards I'll be talking with Brandon Klein, founder of Wise Mind, Gentle Soul. Don't go away. You're watching The Splash on Civic Center TV. Civic Center TV is your home for everything Greater West Bloomfield. Here you can tune into community programming such as our weekly news magazine show, The Splash, as well as coverage of local events and meetings in Kego Harbor, Sylvan Lake, Orchard Lake, and West Bloomfield. You can also watch all of your local programming online anytime at civiccentertv.com. Civic Center TV, television that's close to home. Civic Center TV has gone social. Now it's easier than ever to watch, save, like, and share our videos online. See what's happening in your neighborhood, on the streets, and on the web at civiccentertv.com. Be a part of the conversation and get involved. We would love to hear from you. For links to our social media pages, visit us at our website or find us on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. Civic Center TV, television that's close to home. And now, back to The Splash on Civic Center TV. Welcome back to The Splash. I'm Sheena Monin, and here with me on the show this week is Brandon Klein, founder of Wise Mind, Gentle Soul. Brandon, we're so excited to have you here on the show today. Thanks for being here. Yeah, thanks for the invitation. I'm really excited because you are here to talk about something a little bit different, but it's becoming very popular, and that is meditation. Your journey into this sphere is also a little bit different as well. Tell us a little bit about how you got into meditation and what was so powerful about it that you changed your entire focus at the university. Yeah, sure. So I grew up with a lot of anxiety, okay. um, and I still have a lot of anxiety. And as a young kid, I would have like a lot of constant worry and fear. And, you know, I went through different methods to take care of it. But one thing I didn't have was like this skill that I could wake up every morning with to make sure that I was like on a baseline. Because, you know, people who are predisposed to anxiety and worry, they need that little extra something to make sure that they're on a level playing field in terms of what's going on in their mind. And so it took until I was 20 years old. I was at the University of Michigan where I uh, did my undergrad. And this um, woman, this incredible woman, was teaching meditation, contemplative practices, she called it, on North Campus, which is, if you know U of M's campus, it's way out there. And um, she taught us how to journal about what is going going on in our mind body mood and she taught us how to do seated and nature based meditation so it involved noticing when our thoughts like dictated our reality or when we wanted to get rid of them and she taught me how to like focus on my breath and notice when my thoughts took over my life and as soon as i did that it was the first all natural, no side effect practice that made me say oh wow there's hope for me to not be cured but to live a little bit better Nice. I think that's something we're all seeking, right, is to have a happier life, a more fulfilled life. And so from that class, that experience, yeah. you decided to change your focus at university and eventually 
leave and you were going about, about to get your doctorate degree, right? Yeah, so that's right. such a big move right there. Big yeah. change. Yeah, after University of Michigan, I went to Hofstra University to go get my PhD in clinical psychology, as you alluded to. I wanted to be a private practice psychologist. Yeah. Um, and I didn't really even think about teaching meditation, but when I was in the program, I noticed there was a strong focus on diagnosing individuals and treating them from a perspective of fixing their weaknesses rather than leveraging their strengths. Now, I still think clinical psychology is wonderful. There's a role for medication. There's a role for therapy. My role as a practitioner was not in the diagnosis model. So I left without any idea what I was going to do. But I had done meditation with my clients, and I decided months later that, hey, I think Michigan could really use the skill-building meditation coaching that I benefited from so greatly. And it turns out that I think I was onto something. Fantastic. So what are some of these benefits to meditation and maybe some misconceptions that might exist as well? Yeah, so first, let's definitely start with what meditation isn't. So I think <laughs> people often think of, and as a result of media and magazines and such, they think of meditation as this perfect bliss, that you're rendering your mind completely thoughtless and you need to go move away and you know go join a monastery, and that's an option. But I am really into an idea of meditation as helping us in our day-to-day -day lives wherever we are, not needing to change your life to suit the practice, but mm -hmm. making the practice suit your life. So what meditation is to me is its number one benefit is it creates a new relationship with your thoughts. So rather than letting your thoughts dictate your world, you can see your thoughts and then decide how you want to implement them. Mm -hmm. So the benefits then from there are in increased creativity, mm -hmm. decreased anxiety, it can help with pain in your body, it can help with more restful sleep, but it all starts with that relationship with thoughts. Interesting. So it's like controlling our reactivity and learning to respond, which sounds a bit more controlled and a bit more thoughtful. That's a great way to describe it. Very nice. Yeah. Good. So uh, wh how would someone, a, a novice, a yeah. beginner, start to meditate? Just very basic, sit quietly. Like what would you recommend? Hey, I want to do this for like five minutes or 10 minutes or however long it is. What would you recommend? Yeah, well, I think starting with a coach obviously is a great call. Okay. There are also many apps such as Headspace or Insight Timer that I would recommend. But let's say you want to do neither of those and start on your own. Number one, I'd say for the first week, sit in silence for one minute. Oh, okay. See if you could sit in silence, no phone, one minute. Get through that week, cool. Do five minutes. Do some different breathing techniques, so in through the nose, out slowly through your mouth with your pursed lips. Start to notice when your mind gets distracted and see if you can come back to the breath. Mm. That would be a great practice for a couple of weeks, and then you just keep progressing. But that silence part is step one. Mm. Yeah, I bet in our, our busy world, I don't know how often I ever have silence, really. <laughs> There's always something going on, right? Yeah. That's really quite essential. I can see that. For those who are watching and they maybe are thinking, wow. I want more information. I need this in my life. Where can they go to get some more information? Yeah, sure. They can go to my website, uh, www.wisemindgentlesoul.com. Mm -hmm. On there, they can find my phone and email to get in touch with me personally as well. Awesome. So you offer personal coaching and, and group classes as well? Yep. So I primarily offer personal, one-on-one, -on -one, duo coaching, and then group coaching for private groups. And then I go out to different businesses and institutions if businesses ever want as well. Good. Awesome. Well, thanks for stopping by today. We really appreciate it. You You've given me new things to think about, so I appreciate that so much. Thanks for having me. Once again, everyone, we've been speaking with Brandon Klein, founder of Wise Mind Gentle Soul. Now let's head over to another of our reoccurring segments called Parenting on the Go, where I sat down with Blended Families experts Melva and Jesse Johnson to discuss Blended Families. <music> Hello and welcome to Parenting on the Go. I'm Sheena Monin and joining me here today is Jesse and Melva Johnson. Mr. Johnson holds a master's degree in humanistic and clinical psychology from the Michigan School of Professional Psychology. Mrs. Johnson holds a master's degree in social work from the University of Michigan. Mr. and Mrs. Johnson have over 60 years of combined experience as relationship coaches and educators, workshop presenters, and consultants. Thank you both for being here today to talk about the very important topic of blended families. Mr. Johnson, I can imagine that mm -hmm. blended families have their own unique set of challenges and difficulties. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. And uh, these days there are a lot more blended families. Yeah. And so as a consequence, uh, that creates some real challenges mm -hmm. for a lot of uh, marriages. Um, we, uh, uh, when we got married, fortunately, <laughs> <laughs> uh, the minister that married us uh, decided to include my two sons from my previous marriage and so were the four of us and so he included 
them in the ceremony and, oh. and, and, and basically said, you know, you also have some responsibility here mm -hmm. to make sure this family works. Mm -hmm. And so they were delighted to, to be a part of that. And so we were all excited about being together as a family uh, because we had fun together and enjoyed doing things together. Uh, but then we moved in together and it was a whole I new bet, yeah. bag, okay? Yeah. Let me tell her about that. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> tell us a little bit about some of those challenges, I would imagine. Yeah, because, you know, the romantic stage was just fun, 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 hanging out enjoying each other. Then we moved together under the same roof. Mm. Then all of a sudden we saw four different people. Oh, and yeah. sometimes the four different people didn't get along. Yeah. So we shifted right to the power struggle. Mm. So we thought, okay, so what do we do? You know, uh, he's getting on my nerves. I was the only female. This one's getting on my nerves, yeah. what have you. So what are we gonna do? So Jesse said, well, you know, we really have to figure this thing out. Yeah. It's like, we've had all this training. You know, That's we've had all this life experience. Let's figure it out. Because it's not something you can just ignore. Absolutely Because everyone's not. always there. <laughs> Absolutely. Right. Absolutely. And then we had to deal with not just the four of us under the same roof. We also had to deal with the fact that there was another biological parent oh, who did not yeah. live there. Yeah. And then what the boys were dealing with in terms of their feeling loyal to mm -hmm. Jesse, feeling mm -hmm. loyal to their mother. Mm -hmm. And then where does the stepmother fit in to that? Yeah. So we worked it through. Yeah, that's and fantastic. And Jesse came up with a structure oh, okay. that really helped us to figure it out. Oh, great. Tell us a little bit about your, your three game plan points that you have. Yeah, well, um, I thought, first of all, it was very important that we uh, were able to sit down as a family and communicate and talk to each other, yeah. that we really understand each other and learn how to support one another. So that was one of the first things. We call those family meetings, and so we oh, okay. would meet uh, as often as we needed to initially. And uh, uh, each of us would share, for example, what was going on in our world. Mm -hmm. We could ask each other for support. That included Melvin and I mm -hmm. in terms of from our sons because they could support us as well, uh, like in terms of doing the chores. <laughs> and Emotional support. Emotional support. and, and, and those, sharing each other on. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, and so uh, that was very important. And um, I think also just being honest about the conflict that's there, right? Yeah. That would yes. be important as well. Yeah, and to make sure that it was solution oriented. Mm. So this is, yeah. this is the hand that's been dealt. So this is how we're gonna play it to get to the other side. Yeah, so absolutely. that it's win-win. Right, and speaking of that, uh, number two, I would recommend that you do not allow the children to divide and conquer. Mm -hmm. And that's especially important when you have a blended family that consists of children from two different homes. Because mm -hmm. a lot of times the kids don't always get along. Right. And they will play the parents against each other. And so that can create yeah, that can tear down the team that you're trying oh, to build yeah. for sure. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Now, Melva, are there any other tips and, and strategies out there you want to share in closing for blended families who may be watching? Yeah. So uh, making sure that um, people know how to speak to each other with respect okay. and understanding and uh, to listen with curiosity mm -hmm. and, um, to, and with compassion mm -hmm. and to make sure that... Um, it's not either the children first or the marriage first. It's like it's both in. Mm -hmm. Both parts of the family unit, the whole part of the family unit yeah. is important. And we wrote about it a little bit in our book called Mining for Gold in Your Marriage. Okay. It's a 12-step journey to finding the treasures in the relationship. However, those treasures are really within. Yeah, nice. And um, so uh, that's one resource. And we also say if you need help, Get it. Yeah. Professional help is not a bad word. Not at all. Great. Get in touch with your therapist, your social worker, someone who yeah. can help you to have a plan to make mm -hmm. things work. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you both so very much for being here today to talk about this very important and relevant topic. Oh, You're welcome. Thank you. And thank you all for watching another episode of Parenting on the Go. If you would like to look up more helpful parenting tips, you can visit the West Bloomfield Youth Assistance website at wbyouthassistance.org. 
For more episodes of Parenting on the Go, visit civiccentertv.com slash parenting to go. Now it's time for our final segment on The Splash called Person of the Week, where we recognize those within the community who are either inspiring or providing toward others. And this week's recipient is Jake Ward, sophomore at West Bloomfield High School. Jake Ward, alongside a fellow West Bloomfield football teammate, is leading the charge to end childhood cancer from right here in West Bloomfield. It's not often one of our own high school students makes such an impact, but Jake is a positive exception to that. A football and soccer player at West Bloomfield High School, Jake is making it his mission to kick childhood cancer through fundraising and greater awareness of the need to find a cure. Jake is using the popularity of Lakers sports to raise money for children who need a cure for cancer. Taking the torch from one of his graduating teammates and fighting for a cure in our community. While most high schoolers spend their time focusing primarily on themselves and their personal future, Jake is spending his time trying to create a brighter, healthier future for so many children. He does this by coordinating fundraisers and raising awareness to help people who need it the most. Jake is taking on a serious issue while inspiring others to help children in need, which is why he is our Person of the Week. If you would like more information on the West Bloomfield Kick It fundraiser or make a donation, you can follow the link below and visit alexslemonade.org. And if you happen to know someone who is providing a service to their community, then let us know by sending an email to the splash at civiccentertv.com. We want to congratulate those who are making a difference in our area, and we appreciate all of your suggestions. That's going to do it for us this week, but remember, you can watch new episodes of The Splash every Monday at 5.30 p.m. or throughout the week for replays. You can also watch every episode online at civiccentertv.com. Don't forget to follow us on Facebook under Civic Center TV 15, YouTube at Civic Center TV 15, and on Twitter at Civic Center TV for more information. For all of our friends in Sylvan Lake, Orchard Lake, Kego Harbor, and West Bloomfield, I'm Sheena Monin. Thank you for watching The Splash.